Now, this is what the envelope looks like. It's called a ST type of envelope. It, it has a shoulder on it, and that's, that's what the S is, a shoulder tube, tubular. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these. We can't use the envelope off of an old tube because it's made out of soft glass, and I don't have the ability to work soft glass conveniently. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to seal a piece of glass onto the end of here, because we're going to support it on both ends. Okay, then the first thing, I'll go ahead and make this part here, and this part here, and then we'll cut it off, and then close the end off. <laughs> Okay. Okay, that gives us a nice joint between it. <clears throat> I'll let that cool a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to move that down. Use this one here. I've only got one oxygen concentrator running right now. If we get the giant torch on there, we have to start up the other one. But this one will run with one oxygen concentrator. marginal with this torch on this big of a diameter of glass, but um, it'll, it'll work. It'll do it. All right. I'm just using air pressure in the blow tube to um, in, enlarge it.
Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, that's our envelope basic shape. Now, the base needs to be small to fit a light bulb base, so I have to cut that down. So you can see we got to come down considerably in diameter on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this area and then stretch it, and that'll take it on down in diameter. There we go. Okay, that gives us our envelope. Okay, that gives us our envelope. Okay, now, this is what the thing's going to look like. Now what we've got to do, I can see from the width of this that we're going to have to cut this off. And we're going to have to make the bottom to where we seal it up here. You can see where they sealed it right there. So we're going to have to cut this off about here to get the width that we need to get in there. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, we're centered right where we're going to cut. Try doing that without the diamond saw. Okay, now what we're going to do is make up the flare and the pinch. What we're going to have to have, okay, we're going to have to come
see in our pinch will be right there. See that's the way this is right here. So they have the part that fits down in the socket and then it folds back around, comes back up and makes the pinch. Okay. <clears throat> Actually this needs this will be coming up like that. Okay? Okay, that looks good. Now, for our electrodes, okay, we, we're going to, what they did was they have two pieces that are placed about an eighth of an inch apart for the electrodes. Shaped. Two electrodes shaped like that. This is going to be quite a trick to cut this out. I'm not really sure how we're going to do it. Okay, what we'll do, I'm going to make it out of tin can metal. We'll just go ahead and we'll remove the paint from it. Okay, now, the next thing we have to do is make this piece right here, and that will flare and be sealed onto there. looks good. And that will go in there like that. Okay, that's going to do. Okay, we're going to use two pieces of nickel. Okay, we'll just make them... Okay, that's going to be long enough. Okay. A little flat spot on them. Okay, we set the current really high. We flare the tungsten. What this does is it um, drives the gas out of the tungsten so that we don't get any bubbles. It also puts a coating of oxide onto the tungsten that makes the seal.
All right. Okay, now let's go take a look at it with a magnifying glass. There we go. See, we're going on down. See, the rubber is sealing right around the edge of that flare. Okay. Okay. Now when this gets down into the 75 micron range, then the, the um, diffusion pump light will come on. <clears throat> we're slowly going down. We're out, you have to outgas all of it. <clears throat> all right, the diffusion pump just came on. Take it about 20 minutes now to heat the diffusion pump up and uh, pull it down to um, 10 to the minus fourth tor to where we can do the leak test. So we'll go do something else in that time. Okay, we've got the uh, filament turned on. We're sitting down there in the, you know, way down into the green. Um, so we're ready now to do a little helium. Let's see if I got any water here. Okay, we've got some bubbles. Okay, now, let's see, I'm going to set this. We're on the most sensitive scale. I'm setting it to zero. Alright. Blowing helium onto the... Um, looking for any movement at all on the needle. We get none at all. Not the slightest leak, okay? So we got a good seal. Turn the seal, turn that off. Okay, we turn the um, diffusion pump to cool down. Um, close the valve. And close that. Pump off. All right. What we've, <clears throat> what we've got is a, I made up a uh, copy of it on the computer. This is a one-to-one -one copy, and I scaled it to where it's the size that we're going to want for our tube. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out. Cutting paper out is not too bad, but I just wonder what's going to happen when I try to do this in the tin. Now another way, I could put it on the engraving machine and use a mill and just you know, go ahead and um, see and see it. I may be stuck with doing that, I'll have to see. Once I get the program written for it, then I can make all of them I want. Alright, I'll cut those out later. So, to stick that onto there, I'm going to use spray glue. Man, this is going to be a real bear. Well, I'm going to I'm going to get busy at it. OK. 
Okay. The scissors is a lot quicker on the outside, but we can't do these inside cuts. Okay, we have the nibbling tool. It just has a little blade in there that um, when you squeeze it, it just cuts down. So you take it and place it on the metal, and it takes a little nibble out. And it's very effective on thin metal like this. However, there is situations where, where it is not effective, and that's into, into little small areas down in there. I don't know how we'll get down in there. We'll do the best we can. All right, let's go ahead and um, see what we're going to do to get the rest of this out of here. Burr. I need a very small burr, but I think that probably... The stand standard disc here is going to do it. Okay, we'll see what happens. It really cuts it good, but I can't get in there with this angle. Okay, I'm going to try this little burr here, I don't know if it'll do anything. I'm, I'm going to go and buy some burrs. Okay, that, that really did a surprisingly good job there. Okay, we got to punch out two holes here. Okay, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hit those with a punch. Let's see what I've got. Okay. Okay. Now it's all uh, bent up, but that doesn't make any difference because we take it over here. Now it's flat as a pancake. All right, and we got some sludge all over it, so we'll clean it. Okay, yeah, well, not exactly. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, now. I need another one exactly like it. Dad gummit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to run another piece of paper off on the printer and go from there. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we have to get our evacuation stem. Okay, we're going to go out the bottom on this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just punch a hole in the side of here and um, we're going to seal the stem onto it.
The little diamond burrs really cut through that glass easy. Okay, there's our little hole. Okay, the evacuation stem is going to be a piece of uh, two tenths. That's 270. Okay, this is two tenths inch. And we're just going to go right into there. Okay, so what I have to do... Alright, what I have to do is polish this and get it to where it's going to fit right onto there. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little angle on it because we, we don't want it to come out at an angle like this. We want it to come out down. So we're going to go in and over. Okay? Okay, that gives us a little angle. Okay, now it needs to be shorter. Now for that we'll need a more potent diamond cutter here. Alright, now we have to take it and, and get the sides off of it because it goes on an inner diameter. See, we're, we're making this to have the, the curve so that it fits closely inside. You know, I would think bending it even more. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, we need to hold this while we do the works. So, probably, let's get the big clamp over here. Look at that little bitty flame. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that something? Woo! Ah. Okay, we're a little bit hot on that. You know, I think I better warm that up a little bit. I'm just using the annealing torch here to um, warm this up a little bit because we don't want to just heat it on one side or we might crack it. Alright, here we go. Okay, we'll warm this back up. Uh, 
I'm just sealing that, that glass tube onto there. Okay, we got a problem here. Get down in there. That looks good. Okay. I'm just going to cool it down with the annealing. Just taking it, cooling the whole thing with the annealing thing. I don't know if you can see that on the video or not. The annealing torch doesn't show up very well. Okay. Now, we'll just let that cool. And that gives us our evacuation step. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to connect our flare. We have to take this flare and seal it onto the outside. I'm just pressing the flange over onto the um, flare and then melting the edge. Keeping the torch away from those wires. You're in a very hot flame, extremely hot flame right now, hottest that we can get it. Healing torch. This is Pyrex, so we don't have to go to a big bunch of trouble in kneeling it. Good enough. Okay. Now, we've got our two electrodes. They look pretty good. Now, what we have to do is weld these onto, onto here. Okay, that looks good. Okay. That didn't weld very well. I'm going to put a little bit more juice. Got to get to it, so I'm going to have to go the other way. Okay, that's pretty stiff, it's pretty stiff. All right, okay, there's our electrodes.
Now this one doesn't get a getter since we're doing this with high pressure neon. You know, probably 12 tor or so. We don't need a getter in it. We're just gonna gonna go ahead and bake it, and that'll be it. Okay. Doing this without a lathe would probably be possible, but it would sure be a lot more difficult. warm it up. Now, to seal this joint, I'm going to need a lot of straw. I got little pieces of straw here that are used as welding rod. Okay, and I'm going to keep plenty of this handy because we're going to need a lot of it. Alright, we look real good. Okay, we're touching up here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fuse this first. Okay, we need a little piece of straw. See, we have a gap there, and it's not going to try it. It'll always pull away. All right. We got it touching there. It's welded. The other side. Okay. We're perfect position inside, and we now have it joined onto one more little piece. Okay, now I'm going to use pressure just to go ahead and um, even it out. Can you imagine the annealing that would have to be done with this thing if we were using soft glass? It would be unbelievable. I don't know if you can even get away with it. Alright. Okay. Got a leak. See right there? Okay, we got a leak there. We got it. See, we got another one right there. That's just to the wires. Okay, we got two leaks. Okay, let me get it. The marks a lot. I'm going to mark where they are. 
Ecco. Okay, we're flaring. Okay, here's the leak. I see the little spot there where it is. Okay. All right. That's got it. It's just smooth as can be. I'm just going to take it and let that... ...cool down slowly. All right, now i got to get the other one. I'm just going to warm it slowly here. Damn. The, uh... <laughs> the damn stuff. It burnt the, uh... Even going onto the wires directly, we hardly get it. The pressure, we're down to 70 microns already. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and put the oven on it. We'll bake it. We got four hours till we um, charge it with gas. All right, now for case for the, the the lamp. Okay, we're gonna mount. We have a block of wood that's about an inch and a half thick, and we're just gonna mount that socket in it, and we'll hollow it out underneath for a uh, power for the power supply. Have a little switch on it, a little uh, label, make it real nice and cute. will be in there about like that and okay we'll leave okay the power supply will take about that much room so I would say we're gonna make it let's let's make it about like this make it about like that okay so that will be our cabinet <laughs> Okay. All right. That's going to be our little housing for it. And this will be sitting in there like so. And um, that's going to be real nice. Now, the next thing we'll do is we're going to sand it all down and make it nice and pretty. Look at that grains. Woo!
look at that grain structure of that that grain structure of that wood okay the next thing we have to do <coughs> all right we've got to have a hole in here for the socket okay I'm going to put that right about there maybe a little bit more to the front right like that okay okay Okay, to cut the hole, we'll use a hole saw. It's not quite as elegant as using a drill bit. I don't know if we can go that deep. We have to go all the way down, but we'll try it. Now, to go any deeper, I have to break that core out of there. To do that, we'll just take a... Uh, take a screwdriver here. Break that core. Okay. And we'll get that out of there. Okay, now we can go deeper. Uh, now, to, to finish this off, we'll have to go from the other side. There she goes. Okay. That gives us our hole. Okay, see, and that'll go right down inside there. Okay. Now, in the back, we have to make a cavity. All right, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go. Okay, we need the width of the power supply. Okay, now, the power supply is going to sit in there like that. So, we're just going to go right here. All right, go across here. Here. And here. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is just cut this out. Okay, we're going to cut that out deep enough so that our power supply will fit down in there. Okay? Exactly. Sort of vertical. It doesn't make any difference at all, really. It's just to hollow it out. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll just cut that out. If this was aluminum, we wouldn't be machining at this rate. Okay, now that gives us our cavity for the power supply to sit in. See, that'll sit right down in there. And 
Okay. Now there's our front, so the the thing has to go in there. We want it in there with that thing facing exactly there. See, that's the little mounting thing. It's going to go right there. Okay, now this has got to be put <coughs> back in the house where it isn't going to get broken. If I break this, I'm going to be. Oh my. Now, so that has to go in there at the right depth, though the depth will be, um, okay, I'm going to put it right there. Okay. Got it at the right angle for the thing to sit. All right, that looks extremely good. All right, we're just going to put a quarter inch hole in there for the cord. Okay, and that will be towards the bottom. Okay. And that's going to be our that's going to be our little housing. All right, now let's go ahead and we'll stain it up. I'm going to use a light colored stain on it. I'm just going to use the um, I'm going to I'm going to use just the uh, dark walnut. I'm not going to use the extra dark stain. This has got such beautiful grain to it. We want to show that grain up. It's got a little piece of um, a little piece of um, like towel material, it's just cloth. Get a little stain on it, and we're just gonna. Oh, look at that! Wow! Oh, that is so choice! Oh, look at that! Whew. Look at the grain on that wood! Wow! I don't know what kind of wood it is, it's, it's a piece of wood somebody gave me. Okay, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, that'll do. All right, we have our little voltage multiplier. This is a very simple circuit. Okay, and this gives us a voltage of two times right here, and then we add the peak voltage of this on top of it, so we get a a total peak voltage here of three times as much as the line voltage. So it's over 400 volts that we get on the tube. Now, by picking the size of this capacitor, we can make it to where we have a very low uh, current through the tube. We'll, we'll, we'll pick it to give the number of milliamps we want. So we don't have any losses in the circuit at all. So this is a very simple driver right here for it. And we just have it built on a little circuit board here. We have a one microfarad, it turned out, for the inlet capacitor that limits the current. And then we got a 10 mic here for the storage condenser. And then a couple of uh, one in 2069 diodes. They're just some little 400 milliamp cheapy diodes. And we always put a fuse on everything. Uh, you know, if it plugs in a line, put a fuse. Just, you know, be, be, be safe. Okay, now that is going to fit inside of here, whichever way it'll go. Okay, now we have a hole in the back here and a mounting plate. We're going to put a little switch here for turning it on and off. Let's see what we got here. Okay, there we go. Nice little Alco toggle switch. We'll just put that in. Okay, we need a way of holding that socket in there. We're going to want that to be exactly vertical. We're just going to glue it in with epoxy. 
This stuff is great. JB Will, JB Quick. It, it's a surprisingly good epoxy. It seems like it would be some pretty cheap junk being at the uh, local store, but it sure does work good. to get it exactly right. Okay. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Okay, we're going to let that harden. And that'll hold it in place while we go ahead and do the do the mounting. Just fine. All right. The the JB weld is hard. Okay, so the tube sits in there perfectly. Now we will <coughs> wire in the switch and a line cord. All right, we're going to connect up our unit here. Okay, this one goes on to here. This one goes to right here. Okay. And then this will slide. I've got a trill right here. There we go. There. That's just perfect. See? It just drops right down in there perfectly. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cover that with a, uh, a piece of felt so that it'll be nice. Okay, now, let's see, we'll cut us a piece of felt. Okay, and that's going to go on the bottom. Alright, now, what I need to do, okay, I'm, what I'm going to do, I need to spray it, so what I have to do is kind of clog. And I'll just cut. Okay, I'm just going to cut this out the same shape. Yeah, to keep us from getting the glue down in the electronics. It wouldn't hurt anything, but still, it, you know, we don't need to. Okay, I'm just going to stick that. Right there. Okay. Okay, that's going to do it. 
I'm going to cut a little piece of cardboard just to put over that. See, it'll keep this from poking down. It, it isn't going to poke down anyway, but I'll go here. stick that right there. Good enough. Ain't that cute? Okay. See that glue will hold it on there. Okay, I'm going to stick that onto there. See, I'm going to stretch it so that it'll be tightly on there. Okay. And I'm just going to stick it down. Okay. And then, I'm going to go along here, okay, and along here, yuck, okay, and here, god, that'd be so choice. You know, it, it's just everything I do I have trouble with. Just take those. And that's it. Look at that. Okay. And then this goes into here. That's it. That looks gorgeous. That is. We turn it on and it lights up. That is just cute as can be. Okay. I'll bet that will look good if I turn the lights off. Let me, hmm. That's perfect night light, eh?